Hi. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the Indy 500. In fact, it just had its 104th running last weekend. So that got me thinking. What are some weird stories I'd never heard of in the 104 years that it ran? I'm sure a couple of you guys are familiar with the six-wheeled Formula One car that ran in the 70s. But what might surprise you was years before that, there was a six-wheeled Indy 500 car. And that's the story. So for anyone watching this video who's not a big IndyCar fan, the average car looks like this, or this, and in the 40s, it looks like this. The important thing to note is they all have four wheels, and we're talking about a car that looks like this. The fact that this car had six wheels is either incredibly revolutionary or incredibly stupid. Let's figure out which one it was. So who are the drivers that ended up racing this car? Well, there ended up being two, as it had two entries in 1948 and 1949. 1948, it was piloted by Billy DeVore, the son of Errol DeVore, the 1927 runner-up of the Indy 500. Billy qualified the six-wheel car in 1948 at 20th and ended the race at 12th. This would be the best finish the six-wheel car ever had. The second driver the car had was Jackie Holmes. This was his first Indy 500 and in 1949 qualified 17th and finished 22nd after a drive shaft failure. This would be the last race the six-wheel car had until the owner, Pat Clancy, transitioned it to a four-wheel car. So who was the man crazy enough to embark on the journey of building a six-wheel race car? Well, it was no one else but the team owner, Pat Clancy. He owned and operated a trucking company out in Memphis, Tennessee, and one day the idea got floated around. Why don't they make a race car like they have their trucks with six wheels? Pat Clancy couldn't think of a good reason not to, so he decided to build his own. After bringing it to Indianapolis, he met with Billy DeVore, and history was made. So what went wrong? Well, adding two extra wheels added about 200 pounds of weight, and two times the mechanical problems. In the long run, this just wasn't worth it, and Pat Clancy quickly changed it to a four-wheel car. Pat was never able to find huge success in Indianapolis. After the six-wheel car, he tried a couple more times with four wheels, and he was never quite able to find the race-winning car. Hopefully, his legacy will live on, as someone who tried. He tried to make a six-wheel car, he tried to innovate. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the race win, but he was able to make history. No one else has made a six-wheel car since. It is something totally unique to the 1948-1949 season, and I hope I can share this story with a couple more IndyCar fans out there. Bye-bye.